I started this message last week, and for those that were not physically here, uh, you, you're going to catch part two, but you had to be here for part one to understand where I'm coming from. Amen. Somebody say amen, Colossians. Amen. amen, Colossians chapter two on the other side of Ephesians, amen? Yes. You can find it, amen? If you can't find it by looking through the Bible, look in the table of contents. Yes. Amen? amen? And last week I brought my sign and I brought my sign back. And I wore a different robe, so you know it ain't the same sermon, but it's a continuation. Amen. And every Christian should wear a sign. Amen. Every Christian should wear a sign. Amen. Amen. Many who won't hear don't understand where I'm coming from, but this is part two. Amen. Amen. Part two. Amen. Amen. Asking you, did you know you're God's private property? Amen. Look at somebody and say, did you know? Your God's private property. Amen? Amen. And if you're God's private property, there are certain things you cannot be involved in. Amen. There are certain things you cannot be doing. Amen. Somebody say amen now. Amen. One of them, no soliciting. Yes. And the devil should never come to you trying to get you the lottery. Amen. There should also be no trespassing. Amen. Come on, somebody. You, you and I are private property. And here at the bottom it says, all offenders, that mean the devil crowd, will be persecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Somebody say amen. amen. In other words, when the devil messes with you, you say, you need to leave me alone. Amen. Why do I need to leave you alone, he might ask, because I'm God's property. Amen. You heard a prime property. Come on, somebody. But we're God's property. Amen. And when something belongs to God, the devil ain't got no business messing with it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I mean, what kind of preacher is that that wear a sign on Sunday morning? They're the last one of us that have a sign, amen? A sign that when folks come to know who we are. Come on, somebody. They know right away what you stand for. Somebody say amen. But the sign should not be on the outside. The sign should be on the inside. You should wear the word of God in your heart and not on your sleeve. You can wear a cross all you want. Come on, somebody. There's a whole lot of folks that are in the thing that are wearing a cross, but the cross should be in their heart. My, my, my. I'm just giving you a little time. You know the word to say no soliciting uh, simply means, uh, uh, you know, to seek, obtain by persuasion, intrigue or formal application, to entice or incite, to evil, to do evil, uh, illegal action. To approach with an uh, offer of sexual service or uh, someone's desire. That's what soliciting means. Don't let the devil solicit you. I don't care how smooth uh, he talks. I don't care how beautiful her skin may be. Don't let the devil use somebody to use you. When you trespass, you cross over into somebody else's zone. Minding somebody else's business. You and I got to be careful in the hour in which we live. In Colossians, we find out that, that Paul wrote the church of Colossians in chapter 2. We're going to be starting at verse 1. He wrote the church of Ephesus because Ephesus was preoccupied with being the Christ of the church. But Colossians was preoccupied with being the church of Christ. Oh, Ephesus was one who was concerned about the body. But Paul wrote the church of Galatians because he was concerned about the head. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. We're living in dangerous times, and you and I on Calvary Cross was bought with a price. Look at somebody and say, a ransom was paid for my soul. I've been bought with a price, and the price has been paid in full. Look at somebody and say, you blessed and don't even know it. You see, you are a private property. Oh, come on, somebody. Private property. The devil ain't got no business soliciting you. So you can say to him, no, no, no. Sometimes you got to tell the devil, all right, no. When, when, when you, you say no to drugs, you got to say yes to Christ. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Whatever you say no to, you got to say yes to something. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't with me this morning. I'm going to have to 
I'm going to have to get on and push you up this morning. Amen. You see, you, you might not know it, but you were paid for a long time ago. Uh, you were bought with a price a long time ago. The blood that was shed on Calvary's cross paid your debt in full. Come on, somebody. All you got to do is serve him. Live for Christ, and he'll do the rest for you. Amen? That's all it takes to live right before the presence of God. Amen? Here in Colossians, we see for Paul said, For I would that you know what great conflict, hallelujah, what great conflict I have for you, for them at Laodicea. God, Laodicea was one of the seven churches of Asia Matter. Paul wanted this epistle not only to be preached in Colossians and Ephesus, but take that message up to Laodicea. So God said, I know your works, Laodicea, and I would that you would be hot or cold. Because God said, if you're lukewarm, God said, I'll vomit you and I'll throw you up out of my mouth. God said, I know you was who thought you was rich and important and famous and was a world trade center and you did great things. But God said, you're poor and you're wretched because you allow your wealth to get to you. Come on, somebody. He, they allow their prosperity to ruin their walk in Christ. Some people ain't right until they got money in their pocket. And when they get money in their pocket, they forget all about God, not knowing that they have been solicited by the devil, not knowing that they have trespassed the law of God. You and I got to be very careful. Whatever you put in front of God can cause you to trespass against God. You see, you and I can trespass against one another. We can say something that ain't got nothing to do with nobody else's business. You know, folks, there are some folks that be in your business. Well, come on now. They're all up in your business. They know what color Kool-Aid you like to drink. They know what kind of pots you got in your kitchen. They come right out of the street and stick their hand in your pot. And they ain't even wash their hand. Well, come on, somebody, talk to me. They can trespass you by saying something to you or doing something to you. They can trespass. Well, you know folks can trespass you even when they know you're going to work. They're trying to hold you up for work. Well, you, you might not want to hear that kind of preaching. But you and I are prime property. We are God's private property. And God don't want us to abuse our time or abuse our talent. He don't want to misuse what he has given us. Somebody say amen. amen. Time is running out and Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. Ready or not, prepared or not, the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah. And if you belong to God, you got to get your house and keep your house in order. Yeah. Most folks that want to get it together sooner or later, I'm saying get it together now. And when you get it together, keep it together. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, you may not know it. But you know it now. You're prime property. You're a private property. He says here now, I dealt with Laodicea. Laodicea need to come back to her first love. Like the Church of Philadelphia. Laodicea need to know, thus saith the Lord, and repent of her deeds. Amen? Because God ain't going along with no lukewarm church. Fleshly and worldly churches where folks then crept in and did all kind of things and then they want to blame it on God. When things don't go right, they won't preach and teach the word of God no more. They want a watered down version. When I said it once, I said it again. I didn't bring no sugar and I didn't bring no honey. And I want to go as far as say, I didn't even bring no peach juice. Because I ain't sweet nothing today, amen? I want you to hear the word of God just like it is. I want you to know it just for what it is. I want you to make a change in your life. Because when the devil crowd come at you, you got to let them know all offenders will be persecuted to the full extent of the law. Why? Because I am private property. And don't you cross me. They had to learn it the hard way. 
I said it before, every one of these signs should be hanging in the church. Every one of these signs should be hanging up here in the church. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, my God. I want to hide, hang it up so you can see it. Uh, ain't that doing that look good? Come on, I hope that camera get that. Amen. No soliciting. No loitering. Come on, somebody. Because, you see, most folks go to church to loiter. They don't go to participate. Come on, somebody. God didn't call you to be a spectator. God wants you to participate. He wants you to praise the Lord. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to glorify him. He wants you to magnify him. He wants you to lift him up. Some folks come to church and get mad. They don't come to shout and praise the Lord. They got to come with an attitude. Go to sleep with an attitude. Wake up with an attitude. Walk around with an attitude. And then they want to put their attitude on you. But the devil is a liar. I got to say no to him when he tried to get you to lie. Bad spot to be in when you're preaching caught in a lie. My, my, my. Let me, let, let, me, let me get back to the message. Verse 2 says that their fathers might be comfort being knitted together in love unto all riches and the fullness of assurance. The fullness of assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mysteries of God and of the Father of Christ. Oh, Paul can write up something, can't he? In whom are hid all the treasures in whom all the treasures are hidden, all the treasures of wisdom. You want to get some treasures, seek out the wisdom and knowledge of God. God will give it to you. And verse 4 says, For this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Be, be careful of these slick-talking preachers. Come on, somebody. If you're country, you're country. If you're from the city, you're from the city. But you ain't got to get slick because you came from the country. Come on, somebody, because they ain't going to call you a city slicker. Come on, somebody. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. That's how come you can say I might not be physically, but in the spirit I'm in. Join, rejoice. It says, rejoicing and beholding your order. And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. I'm beholding that. And he said in verse 6, as ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus, the Lord, as so walk ye in him. If you receive Christ as your Savior, you got to walk in him. And if you walk in him, you're going to live in him. And if you're going to live in him, when that devil crowd show up, you got to recognize when they show up. You got to point the sign out to them. No soliciting, no loitering. And whatever you do, don't trespass. Oh, come on, somebody. See, some of y'all are scared to tell the devil that don't trespass. Amen. Verse 7 says, root it. Everybody say, root it. When you're rooted, you know roots go down. And they grow deep and wide. And the stronger the root grows in the earth, the stronger you become to be. And I'm talking about the roots of your heart. He says, root it and built up in him. Established in the faith. You got to know what you're staying for. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with all thanksgiving. He said in verse 8, and just a few more verses here. Beware as any man. See, some folks been spoiled. Amen. And don't, 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 don't get mad with me. How many, how many in life have been spoiled? Raise your hand. Now, see, some of y'all been spoiled and you ain't got your hand up. You don't even know what it means to be spoiled. Oh my God. I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna have to preach a sermon on being spoiled. Because some folks don't even understand what it means to be spoiled. Because he says, sometimes when you got things going your way all the time, and then when there's a change you don't like it, you spoil. Well, come on, somebody. You got a toy and you don't want nobody else to play with it. You got a preacher and you don't want nobody else to hear him. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, see, I know where I'm going with it. You have to ask somebody every week, I want you to come and hear a word. Amen. Yeah. 
You ain't got to worry about how it's going to come because not, not one time out of 34 plus years I've been preaching have I ever reneged on God's word. Because I know what the word is capable of doing. And I know once I preach the word, it's going to find a resting place. It's going to find a hiding place. It's going to find a place that's going to make a change in your life. But you got to be willing. Look at somebody and say, you got to be willing to make a change. Oh, I might not see you on Sunday, but you can still make that change. Come on, somebody. For he says here in verse uh, 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceitful after the tradition of men. After the rudiment. Everybody said, beware of the rudiment. The rudiment of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. My, my, my. Anything you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. Anything you're hunting for, you can find it in Jesus. Anything you got a need for, you can find it in Jesus. Anything you desire, you can find it in Christ. If it's love that you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. If it's joy that you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. If it's peace that you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. If it's long suffering you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. If it's a heaven or a wife that you're looking for, you can find them in Christ. Look at somebody and say, whatever you're looking for, you can find it in Christ. Well, God got just what you want. Didn't we learn last week that Jesus is the man? Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, you might, those who were here last week, I, I want you to know that, you know, you, when, you, when you, you, somebody you're dealing with and, and they help you out. Come on, somebody. And you appreciate what they're doing and say, you're the man. You know what I'm trying to say? When they do something right for you, you say, you're the man. And then they say, no, you the man. But I'm here to take it to another level. Jesus is the man. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Jesus is the man. Amen. Because he will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory that be in Christ Jesus. I don't know how you can sit here and look cute when the Holy Ghost is everywhere. The Holy Ghost is on the window pane. The Holy Ghost is on the microphone. The Holy Ghost is on the anointed oil. The Holy Ghost is on the sign. The Holy Ghost is on the lights. The Holy Ghost is in the air. Wherever God's presence is, he breathes in the praises of God. Oh, my, my. Oh, my Lord. He says, for in him, verse 9, for in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete. Look, somebody said, Jesus, make me complete. Jesus, make me complete. That sounds like a title to a song. Yes. Jesus, make me complete. Amen? Yes. In him, you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Not only principality, is he in charge of all power yes. and authority. Yes. Come on, somebody. In other words, the devil can't do nothing to you. That's why you have the authority to say to him, no soliciting. I'm private property. You have the authority because you're in Christ. No soliciting, no loitering. Come on, somebody. You have the authority to see when he's coming to attack. You can say, and no trespassing. Because I'm born with a price. And I'm in the body of Christ. And if I'm in the body of Christ, then all power and principality belong to God. Yeah. And God love it when he know you know his word. Y'all yeah. believe that? Yeah. Don't you know that God love it when you can quote his word back to him? Yeah. And you can stand on his promise? Yeah. Because God knows that he got my promise. Yeah. She got my promise. Yeah. I can't go back on my word, amen. God got to stand by his word when nobody else can stand by. 
when others will forsake him, when others will walk out on him, when others will abandon him, when others will rebuke him, when others will not be pleased with him, God got to stand by his word. Isn't that beautiful to know? God got to stand by his word. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, it's important that you and I understand that God is who he say he is. And that God that we serve is everywhere. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You believe that this morning? Amen. God is everywhere. Amen. I used to think he was only down in Jerusalem. Now I found out that the Holy Ghost is everywhere. Amen. And wherever you need, the Holy Ghost is right there. Amen. All you got to do is call on him, Joe. Amen. All you got to do is holler out to him, Joe. Amen. I know the day is your birthday, but you got to thank him for 15 years. Amen. You got to thank him for 15 years on this planet Earth, because a lot of young men and women didn't make it. You ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost, and don't ever walk away from the reflection of what God has in store for you. My, my, my. You see, the reason why I know that God is everywhere, because Ezekiel had to tell the people go up in captivity for 70 years, and that the people didn't want to leave Jerusalem because they thought that God only dwelled down in Jerusalem. But God told Ezekiel to tell them to go up into captivity. Say, so if they go up, I'm going to bless them while they're going up. And while they're there for 70 years, I'm going to bless them while they're there. And God says, I want you to tell them, Ezekiel, that I'm the God that's everywhere. You believe that? You believe that God is everywhere? You believe that God is in the emergency room? You believe that God is in the, uh, all in your kitchen and God is also in the MICU and the sick you in the intensive care unit. You believe that God is uh, not only next door to you, but he's in your house? Because the God we serve is everywhere. I used, to, I used to think like that too, that God was just located in one place. I used to think that, that, that when I used to go out and play basketball, I stopped playing basketball for about six months to a year because I didn't think God was on the basketball court. Oh, y'all ain't with me. You see how naive we can be thinking that God is isolated, that the God we serve can be put up on a shelf, but the God we serve is everywhere. You got to get that idea in your head. Everywhere you go and everything you do, God sees and knows all things because all power and all principality belong to him. It is ordained to him for whatever happens on earth, God knows about it. The Bible said that men have to always pray and not to faint. You know why I have you to talk to each other in church? Because some of y'all don't want to talk to nobody during the rest of the week. Look to somebody and say, God would have me always to pray and not to faint. <clears throat> you see, the Bible said that there was a, there was a, and, and, and I, I, I preach this all the time because sometimes it gets to people and sometimes it don't. There was an unjust judge. Now, this is the way Christ explained it. Already from the get-go, if a man is called an unjust judge, that tell you from get go he's already crooked. Am I talking right? In other words, Christ going to detail. Now keep in mind that Jesus is about 33 years old, about ready to be crucified. He was born and raised in this town. He knew all the he knew all the people of the town. He knew the crook and the righteous. And everybody knows that this was an unjust judge. You pay him some money, he'll do some undermining stuff. Amen. If he was in a partnership with somebody else, he was always up to no good. In fact, Christ went as far as to say that the man did not regard God and had no respect for God and had no respect for man. Now, a man is in a lot of trouble just because he got a position and he don't respect God, nor do he respect man. But he was a crooked judge. But the Bible said in the same town, there was a widower. And this widower tried to go to this unjust judge to get him to avenge her adversary. 
In other words, let me just break it down to you so you know what's going on here. This judge had already made a deal with the neighbors over some property and land. And this woman wanted her a uh, part of ownership of this land because her husband died and she had no children. So she went before the gates of the city where they conducted business and the judge was there, was already crooked, already didn't work the deal, wasn't planning on giving the woman nothing, had no intention, but the woman was persistent. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say, when you want something of God, you got to be persistent. I'm saying because you are private property, you can ask God what you will. And it shall be granted according to his will. This woman recognized this man got something. He had the authority to give me what belonged to me. But because he was sitting on that authority, he was sitting on that property, he didn't want all kinds of deals out with somebody else, and he didn't want her to have it, the Bible says she was persistent at this judge. Now, I'm, I'm going to put you in the frame of mind of this woman. Imagine I'm the judge. I'm sitting in the gates of the city. I look up, and there she is. I go down the street to the market, and there she is. I go to eat lunch, and there she is. I go home, and she's sitting on my front porch. I get up in the night, and she's looking through my window. I think y'all are getting the picture now. In other words, whatever that belonged to me, I'm going to get it, and you got the authority and power, but the power that he had didn't belong to him. It belonged to God. Now I want to see how persistent... You're going to be in what you want from him. Yeah. 